Okay, so what happened next? So, broke up already, right? Not boyfriend-girlfriend anymore, right? But he kept on messaging me, so I ignored him. Okay. Then he started to threaten me. He said if I don't go back to him, he'll put my naked pictures on the internet. These are his messages. Okay, give me a moment. How did you meet him, your boyfriend? Ex-boyfriend. What's his name? Roderick. I actually met him for work. I saw a job advertisement online for social escorts, so I applied. After that, a guy called me and told me to meet him at Ice Cream Frenzy along West Coast Drive. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm late. You... Alina? Uh, yes, I'm Lina. Ah, nice to meet you. You got a drink already? Mm. Good, 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 good. Then he asked me the standard things like whether I've done this before, what's my availability like, whether I got preferences or not. Then what happened? Then he asked me if I wanted to earn a lot of money. So I told him, of course, who doesn't want more money? I need to take special photos of you for my social escort agency. Uh, what kind of special photos? You know how men are. They need to see first to appreciate. When they see a sexy girl, they want. So, I will take sexy photos of you so you can earn more by providing sexual services. Okay? I told him okay. So he brought me back to his flat to take photos. Wow. Confirm the photos will be very sexy. Come, stand over here. Okay, come, smile. Okay, now show a little bit more here. Like that. Like that, yeah? Okay, smile. One, two, three. But after we took the sexy photos, I didn't become a social escort. Why not? Because Roderick asked me to be his girlfriend. He asked many times, so I said okay. I was his girlfriend for seven months. What changed? He wanted more control over me. What I do, where I go, said I couldn't go out with my friends, wanted me to stay home all the time. I always have to do what you want. I want to break up. Don't you dare leave me! I have to do whatever I want. I'm not your girlfriend anymore. If you take a step out there, I'll post your naked photo on the internet. Delete them now! Leave me and you'll become famous. All the forums, all the social medias, they will see you naked. So how did Roderick get those naked photos of you? When we were attached, he wanted naked photos of me so that he could see me all the time. So I let him take. I thought it was okay because he was my boyfriend, but now he's using them to threaten me. Can you stop him from posting my pictures online? Don't worry, we'll handle this. Guys, any updates? The complainant said that Roderick had two handphone numbers. When she applied to become a social escort, he contacted her using his business number. But when they were in a relationship, he used his personal phone number. Are both numbers registered to him? I checked with the telcos. The personal number is registered to him, but the number for his business phone is registered to a foreign national who has since left the country. That's definitely a red flag. He's probably involved in something shady. Zane, did you find anything on him? Yep, I did a background check. Roderick's full name is Roderick Chen Hao Run. He has previous conviction of voluntarily causing hurt. 
and assisting in an unlicensed money lending business. Preliminary investigation shows that he is currently unemployed with no income and no CPF contribution. Did the complainant give the name of Roderick's social escort agency? No, she didn't because she ended up being his girlfriend and not a social escort for his agency. Regardless, I checked with Accra. A few years ago, Roderick registered an employment company, finding jobs for women as models and peer promoters. What about his bank accounts? The banks are checking if there's any suspicious activities relating to them. They will get back to me. Alright. Let's hit this registered address. Make sure it doesn't carry out his harassment threat. Suspect is on the way to your direction. Roger. Senior Investigation Officer Neil, you're under arrest for offences under the Women's Charter Act. Cuff him. <laughs> Do all these belong to you? Yeah. Yeah, she's my girlfriend. Well, according to her, she's not your girlfriend anymore. But when she told you that, you threatened to post a nude photos online. I was just angry, okay? I wasn't really going to do it. Everybody says things that they don't really mean when they are angry, right? Do you know what we also found? Photos of other women in lingerie on your laptop. Sir, a lot of men have sexy photos on their laptop. We all like to look and fantasize. Is it a crime to have those photos? It's not a crime. As long as the women give the consent. But that's not the only thing you use your laptop for, right? What do you mean? You uploaded those photos to a website called SG Extra Hot Babes. A website that provides social escort services. You have no proof that website belongs to me. So how do you explain all the photos uploaded to the website being traced back to your laptop? Sir, are you the only one who used your laptop at home? Anyone could have access to my laptop. True. But we also found these group chats on your cell phone. The women in these group chats, their photos are the ones we found on your laptop. The same photos that you uploaded to the social escort website. But you know what's interesting about this? There's this name here, Thomas. He's in every group chat you have with these women. Who is he? The group chats are all about bookings and payments. And according to the messages, after their appointments, the women need to transfer both of your shares into these specific bank accounts. Sir, I run a social escort agency. Of course, these messages are about client bookings and appointments. And the women pay me a commission for finding them their jobs. Nothing wrong. If there's nothing wrong, tell me, who is Thomas? I don't know who he is. Fine. Keep lying. We're interviewing the women who have worked for your social escort agency. We'll see what they have to say. Yeah, I work as a social escort for the agency. Is that all? Yeah. You and I know what social escort really means, right? You need me to say it out, is it? Okay, I also provided sexual services. How did you find out about SG Extra Hot Babes? I needed some extra money. 
So I found this advertisement on the internet that says you can make a lot of money in one day. There was a handphone number. So I called and this guy picked up. He asked me to meet him for an interview at the Ice Cream Frenzy at West Coast Drive. What was his name? Jeremy. So you know, if a client likes you, they will ask for special service. Sex, right? Yes, I know. Good, 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 good. So normally, my girls charge about 350 to 450 per hour. But you, I'll advertise at $550 to $650. For your quality, $350 is way too cheap. Thanks, Jeremy. Don't mention about it. After all, the more you earn, the more I earn, right? <laughs> Jeremy told me that I must only take cash from the client. After getting paid, I would keep 60% and transfer the other 40% to Jeremy's bank account. Jeremy set up a chat group to let me know all the booking details. I will have to message him when I started and when I finish all my appointments. Can you identify Jeremy from here? This one. He's Jeremy. Are you aware that you're listed on SG Extra Hot Babes as a social escort? Oh, um, yeah. Is this without your consent? No, oh, no. Um, I signed up with them. I needed money at that time. Did you get any work through them? Yes. Only for social escort services? There was also sexual services. I was paid $450 an hour and kept 60% for each client I serviced. Who recruited you? Two men named Jeremy and Thomas. There was an advertisement online promoting a daily rated job. When I called the number, I was told to meet them for an interview. I'll create a group chat and put all our clients' booking details there. You'll need to text us before and after the appointment. Understand? Yes. And the client will pay you in cash. You'll need to transfer 40% to my bank account. I will send you the details later. Okay. So, where did you meet Jeremy and Thomas for this interview? At this place called Cream... Ice Cream something. Where was this place? Oh, it's on uh, West Coast Drive. The registered owner of SG Extra Hot Babes website is a foreign company and the hosting server is based overseas. And Eunice, did you manage to find out anything from the women? As you suspected, all 12 women were recruited by Roderick to provide sexual services to clients of the website. But they didn't know him as Roderick. They knew him as Jeremy. Some of the women were recruited by Roderick and his friend Thomas. The same mysterious Thomas that Roderick refuses to talk about. Well, he might not be so mysterious after all. The banks came back with a lead. Roderick's bank account saw numerous daily cash inflows we traced them to seven of the 12 women. But there's one bank account that Roderick transferred money to, which belongs to this guy, Lee Sun An. And we did further checks, and we found that Sun An's bank account also saw varying amounts of money being transferred in. These were traced to five other women. There were also money transferred between Sun An's and Roderick's accounts. The final piece of the puzzle, Su An's bank account number and Thomas' bank account number are a match. Alright, good job guys. Eunice, get the women who met up with Thomas to come back in to do a photo ID. Let's make sure that Thomas is indeed Su An. Please identify Thomas. This one, he's Thomas.
Sunan's registered address was vacant. And Roderick's still playing dumb. How else can we track him down? Where did Lena say he met Roderick? Ice Cream Frenzy at West Coast Drive. That's where all the other women say they met Jeremy and Thomas. Zane, get some eyes on that place. The next time he heads down, we'll get him. Job scope all about. Are you Lee Sun An? Yes. I'm Investigation Officer Eunice. Please follow me. Lee Sun An, you're under arrest for offences under the Women's Charter Act. Cuff him. How do you know Roger Chen? He approached me. He wanted us to work together to set up a social escort agency. SG Extra Hot Babes? Yes. The women recruited by you and Roderick have testified to providing sexual services to your clients of the social escort agency. And they have also testified to paying you a cut from their earnings. What do you have to say? Roderick was the one who created the website. He took photographs of the women in lingerie and uploaded their photos. I only helped him to recruit some of the women. That's all. Roderick Chen Haoran was convicted of living in part on the earnings of prostitution, procuring women for vice activities, and operating a remote communication device for facilitating sexual services. He was sentenced to two years imprisonment and fined $83,000. Another offence under the Protection from Harassment Act was taken into consideration during sentencing. Lee Soon An was convicted of living in part on the earnings of prostitution and procuring women for vice activities. He was sentenced to one year's imprisonment and fined $20,000. In the case you have just seen, Roderick Chen and Lee Sun An had recruited a stable of 12 sex workers for their online prostitution business. Over a period of two and a half years, they earned almost $150,000. Roderick Chen is the first person to be charged under a new law which makes it illegal to operate a remote communication device to carry out a prostitution business. This new law is aimed at tackling the problem of vice syndicates operating online. Increasingly, the use of technology and the anonymity of the internet has made criminal detection more difficult and also helped in facilitating cross-border criminal activities. Despite the challenges, officers from the Criminal Investigation Department and the Technology Crime Forensics Branch persevered in their investigations and spared no effort to crack down on vice activities and bring the perpetrators to justice. If you notice any suspicious activity, call the police hotline at 1-800-255-0000 or call 999 for urgent police assistance. You can also submit information online via eyewitness at police.gov.sg forward slash eyewitness or through our police at SG application. All information will be kept strictly confidential. Scam alert. Credit for sex scams are when scammers use social media platforms to deceive victims into paying money for non-existent sexual services. Between 2017 to 2018, credit for sex scams have registered a steep increase from 414 cases in 2017 to 533 cases in 2018. The total sum cheated in 2018 was at least $1.5 million. In such scams, victims are often lured by strangers through social media platforms such as WeChat. Victims are then topped into buying gift cards in exchange for a meetup, date, or sexual favor. To avoid becoming a victim of such scams, here are some tips. Be wary of strangers who befriend you on social messaging platforms and dating apps. Ignore offers for escort, massage, or sexual services. Reject 
requests for payments via gift cards or fund transfers in exchange for meetups, dates or sexual favours. Do your part to stop scams by joining NCPC's Let's Fight Scams movement. Receive up-to-date information on the latest scams and share it with your loved ones. To seek advice, you may call the Anti-Scam Helpline at 1-800-722-6688 or go to www.scamalert.sg We have come to the end of this episode of Crime Watch. If you have any feedback, do drop us an email. I'm DSP James Go. Until next time, do your part to prevent, deter and detect crimes.